Pretty powerful stuff, huh? No, Ohio. Yeah, it was in Ohio. The Oasis Church. Uh, Tim Cheeks is Dutch's younger brother, and he uh, is the head pastor at uh, Oasis. So, okay. So let's let's see now. Did this prophecy meet our biblical requirements? Was it encouraging? What do you say? Sure. Was it encouraging? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't seem to be very encouraged. <laughs> was it built? Was it building? Yes. Was it comforting? Well. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, to me it was, yes. Yeah. Different uh, ways, different people. Yeah. Well, it was comforting to me because we know who wins the end. Yeah. yeah. Right? That's why. Okay, so here's now your challenge. What say you, after listening to this prophecy, what is the Holy Spirit telling you? And what is He directing you? So let's talk. Okay, watch out. It's gonna get warm. Or it's gonna get light here. I'll kind of ease it in <laughs> so that I don't get all blinded. All right. Okay. So what do you guys say? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'll throw. I mean, I. I don't think that this on its own changed anything where I'm already at. I think it's another data point of what I'm hearing and seeing over and over again. Mm. You know, that, that's my opinion. I mean, it's it's a confirmation. It's, it's a confirmation. It's, 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 a, confirmation. it's mm. a it's a common thing that I that I see, I hear, I believe, and I feel that that it's change is happening. Change is happening. Change is coming. There's a need for change. I think there's a lot of discussion of how that change happens. And I think that's been a series of the last several months. Uh, it's funny, I was a, uh, speaking with uh, Nick when we were talking about you know, the leading and the, within our youth and, and, and Emily and the things that we talk about, how we make change at all levels, mm-hmm. at all levels. And so I think it falls into you know reiteration and reconfirmation of some of the things that we're doing and things we're trying to understand that it needs to get clarity and vision that part of something bigger. Mm-hmm. The change is here, and I feel part. Of it. I feel I feel called. I shouldn't say feel part. I feel called to be part of it, if you will, yeah. to help make those impacts. And so, I think from that regard, I, that, that's pretty much what, what what for me it didn't shift any belief that I already probably have in any way, shape, or form. It's another another version or another data point or addition to someone else repeating mm-hmm. the message, which awesome. is change is coming and it's happening in this country and we need that change. It's interesting. I said he he said the last 60 years in there. Remember that? He said mm-hmm. 60 years. Why did he pick that year? Uh, that's when Roe versus Wade first Oh, that's what, because that was the same same time that they took the, the, bi, um, the, Bible, the Bible out of the schools. Exactly. Which is too. why I said that too, because I've been talking about that and how much we've seen the change and I look at data of of crime and history and everything else since that's been removed from there and the separation of teaching this country and then being founded on the principles of God and the Bible. So that way, that's what I heard. That's about Rover. To me, Rover Street is is one vertical of a bigger problem, which is how we're respecting God's word and God's peace. So that that 60 years instantly to me, I'm like, I wonder why he, that exact date, if which phrase he picked it for, because for me, that's what it's really about, is that we've disconnected this country to teach people what's right and what's wrong, and, and that this is built on God. Yeah. This country is God. It's God, it's God. We are here because of God and Christ, and somehow we've let this country fall out of the hands of the people mm-hmm. to have this be the Lord's and God's country. Yeah. It's not. I would love to say it is, but I don't. It, 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 we may want it to be, we believe it to be, and it's big, strong. But it's a fight for it, I should yeah. say. It is still this country. Yeah. But you would not think, if you came in here from outer space and landed here, and you had 24 hours, and you knew God, you'd say, this isn't God's. This is not God's. Exactly. Right? Does that make sense? It totally does. So so that's kind of what I feel, and it's time to rebirth this, yeah. to become back to God's nation. In God's world, but God's nation here. Yeah. That, that's my thing. Mm. Well, to piggyback on what you just said there, uh, the thing that spoke to me about the, this prophecy is it's all about the remnant, right? And it's this last quarter is about us, the ecclesia. 
and how we can do you know, mighty, mighty things using the blood of the Lamb, right? And the power of our testimony and that sort of thing. Um, you know, to be honest, you know, I, I, I feel like, shoot, I, I wish I had a bigger church right now <laughs> so we could get this out to more people, right? But I realized that, well, a remnant is actually a very small, very small uh, segment, right? If you guys remember when Gideon went to war, right? He had, what, 30,000 people, 30,000 mighty men of war, right? And the Lord just said, no, too many. Let's cut it down, all right? So then he ended up with, what, 3,000. Even that was too much, right? So it finally came down to 300 men out of 30,000. So what is that? What? 1%? 1%? We're part of that 1%. So, you know, I feel really encouraged that we can still do battle. Just us, you know, the eight of us in this room. And the way we do our battle is we pray, right? And we worship. And we call on the blood of the Lamb. And you have the prophecy on that one, how when, when Gideon was coming attack, they were confused. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because God gave them the dream that, you know, Father was coming down, and they were coming from camp to camp, and they didn't know what they were doing. That's right. So even for the fact, they were already confused. That's right. So, yeah. And that's what, that's what he said. And that's what this right. third quarter was all about, right? The enemy is really nervous right now. Yeah. And yes. Uh, we're not worried against flesh and blood. Right. We're worried against the principality, the dark forces in the heavenly realms. Yep. That's where we should go first. Exactly. That's good. Yes, Bill. On the way over here tonight, um, the 15, we were coming down the 15, and where it begins to turn out of North Las Vegas, and you can look over here and see it. All of a sudden, it hit me. Well, two things, and one two punch. One was my heart just broke for Sherelle and what she was going through. And it left from that to the freedom the enemy feels to inspire people to criminal foolishness. That's yeah. just is so destructive. And then I just, I knew what I was supposed to do. We started praying for Las Vegas for the ballot. I said Las Vegas first, and then God went to the ballot. Mm. And we just prayed against all of this nonsense that's going on mm. and to break the back of... And it wasn't something I generated. The Spirit did that. I mean, not too often. I, it's not uncommon for me to be right while praying, but not that. This was a different thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was a... He didn't even talk to me. He just did it. He just came welling up out. And uh, the gathering together... Things happen we can't even begin to imagine when we gather together. But the weapon that we can wield against nations and, and the forces of darkness, we can do that anywhere. Sure. And, and I mean, the Roman legionnaire told us something so important because Jesus, Jesus responded in a way we should pay some attention to here. This man understands authority. Mm -hmm. And, and he can, we can deal with this. You understand who you are and whose you are. Mm -hmm. We can do this. That's right. That's right. That's right. He just gave us all the authority. Mm -hmm. On this earth. Yeah. Rome versus Wade was 50 years ago. Oh, Rome versus Wade was 50. Yeah, 60. Okay, so 60 was then the removing the Bible. Then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's what we can. Anybody else? Just thoughts? Is anyone inspired to do something? Pray more. Pray more. All right. That's good. I mean, I'm inspired. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. The Fond Blue and what we're doing there mm -hmm. with sanctifying every room in that property. And, but I'm also ready to 
destroying people's forces to do justice for the veteran, mm -hmm. the veterans to do. Yeah. Well, one, there's lots of I want to do to give back. Mm -hmm. You know me, I always pay it forward. Mm -hmm. so, not for myself, but for the voters. So. Awesome. But along the way, like you talked about being an evangelist to bring others, you know, spread mm -hmm. the word. So. don't need a big the reason Gideon wasn't allowed to have a large crowd is we're built in such a way and we're broken in such a way that we'll claim we did it mm -hmm. and we'll do that in the drop of a hat and the very best of us will do that yep. and and it's that pride thing was what got Satan in the beginning and, and we, we have no real defense against that only the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. can do it and in his kindness following that out, every one of us walks. We just dismiss things out of the Bible that are so important. He promised that where we put our foot, in Deuteronomy 28, he promised that what you put your hand to, what you put your tongue to, uh, the mark of God on the church, uh, our thinking and our action, uh, the mark of the beast, their thinking and their action. It, it's... Um, we all go into stores and we can all push darkness back out of those stores without making a big show of it. If God says make a show of it, make a show of it. But you don't have to. We don't have to do that. We run into hurt people. We run into sick people. We get into a situation where we can, we can let an untruth stand and make a buck in a contract or we can, we can spell the story out in such a way that it, it works to our benefit not really a lie, but we know in our heart it's not the truth either. And, and we have the power to stop that. And that has effect beyond anything we can imagine. Mm -hmm. So as we go through life, if we can come together like this and be empowered in the presence of God with each other and honor Him, and then as we go through life, quit, quit clicking this off. Church is not this and it will never be this it will never be the building it's us mm -hmm. and wherever you go wherever God brings you to another believer and the two of you begin to mention his name he said he writes that in a book mm -hmm. he said he's there with you and whatever you can come up to do with that needs to be done mm -hmm. and, and so I, I'm just our whole job is wake up the body of Christ to who they are. The enemy cannot stand against who we are. Mm -hmm. And not because we have big numbers or we're so bright. It's who we are. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, I, I don't know, a human baby. Every other thing on the planet has to get out of the way of a human baby because God made us the leaders. Mm -hmm. It's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And we're the church. All those angels who think they're hot stuff that tried to buck God have got to get out of the way. They're bluffing us. And God's letting it happen because he has to clean all of the ego and the pride and the nonsense out of us so he does not have to judge us. But once that's done, stand by. <laughs> oh, there have never been leaders. This is this is the school to prepare the aristocracy of eternity. Those who get through this, who are filtered through, will rule and reign with him in something he said we've never and cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. And it'll be his kind of leadership. He demonstrated when he walked around on the planet. Mm -hmm. He demonstrated what the fivefold is supposed to be. Not the people up on the stage. You're up there so they can hear you. Okay, that's but but the reality is, you're down underneath, changing the diapers, cleaning up the messes, encouraging, helping, and when it becomes important to step out and go in the name of the Lord, you do, because you can, and and that's if if we can just wake up to who we are. I think one thing I 
stepped out for a moment, so I missed a little bit of it. But as I look at this, and um, I don't know if this is profound, but I think about like what is he directing me to do, and I think it should be for each of us. We talk about leaders, and there's leaders at different levels, obviously, but there's self leadership, mm -hmm. and that's the one thing you have absolute control over. Right. And so as I think about self leadership, and I looking at this list here, like encouraging, building, comforting, and really like what is this Holy Spirit telling you to do? I think with each person you interact with on a daily basis that you use those guiding principles in whatever that interaction is, whether it's at soccer, whether it's for birthdays, whether it's for driving down the street, like that, that changes the DNA of a a world, a culture, a place, and so we all can do that. My kids can do that. Like they, I mean, that's so, it's just so simple. And yeah. I think just breaking it down into its simplest form, that's that's like a key takeaway for me. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it doesn't necessarily align to the big presentation and everything that was there, but that makes it very tangible. Right. Something personal. that yeah, yeah, that I can I can take from this mm -hmm. and implement. Awesome. Yeah. So, thank you. Yeah. Oh. No, I think what you're uh, talking about here is literally changing the atmosphere. Because, you know, when we're out there, we are the kingdom of God. <laughs> Amen. The kingdom of God is here. But it's not like it's out there and we have to get into it. No, we are the kingdom. So as we go out, we should be bringing the kingdom with us. And that is that whole idea of changing the atmosphere. So You're again. the only hope they have. That's <laughs> true. It, that, that's why that's why Jesus Christ put us down here and let lets us get poked. Yep. They need to see that there's a there, there's a life that is not like their life that doesn't have to spit back. Yes. It may, but it will apologize if it does. Yep. Something they cannot do and they cannot understand. Mm. And and it's in Rome when the diseases hit in the first century, the Roman general population did the same thing Europe did during the last heat wave. All those people in France took off for their their high mountain places or the ocean and they left their old and their weak in uncooled apartments because mm -hmm. they don't have AC much. Mm -hmm. They haven't needed it. In Rome, when the people were sick and everybody took off, the church stayed. Mm -hmm. And they went in and started ministering to people and sure, some got sick and died because we are going to die. It's appointed once to happen. Mm -hmm. But a lot didn't mm -hmm. because they didn't have to be afraid. They had the Spirit of God. If you want me to come now, I win. If you want me to stay and help, they win. Mm -hmm. and, and when they take one of us, make fun of us, and we don't spit back, they can go home with the hope. When they put us in jail and they don't see us sniveling in fear and they know we're afraid, they have a hope. And that's been the testimony of so many of, of the people who've been persecuted that the guys who were beating them in the daytime had to do it to keep their job and they want their dollars. They want their home. They have a family to feed. Mm -hmm. But when it got tough, they came in private and asked for counsel and help. Mm -hmm. yeah. From the guy that tomorrow morning they're going to be terminated. It, it's, yep. The church works. It just works very different than anything we ever dreamed of. That's right. Counterintuitive. We have a son whose name is Peter. Uh, and when he was born, one. yes. And when he was born, God told me that he was going to be an evangelist. And it's just like what Judge was saying tonight is it's going to be completely different than what we thought evangelist was going to be. Because I was always in my heart saying, why isn't my son an evangelist? But he's a different, where he works, when they, when they have to, because they have a government contract, he was told he had to have, take the shot. Mm -hmm. And he uh, wrote out for a religious exemption. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, his boss said, well, Pete, you're a mighty man of valor. Ah. I'm like, wow. So he is. He's being evangelist in where he goes mm -hmm. as he goes through life. Mm -hmm. 
what a blessing that was to me. I mean, he was just telling us that as because he thought it was kind of funny that his mm -hmm. boss would say that. To him, <laughs> you know, but obviously everybody knows where he stands. Mm -hmm. He makes it, and that's what I'm saying to you, Pete. You don't have to be what everybody thinks an evangelist should be. You you do it the way God put it in your heart to do it. <laughs> and God's going to be different. We have to. Yeah. You know, right. Not the old evangelist, you know, that goes so on good. the street corner and yells. And, yeah. You know. right. <laughs> I mean, you, you might do that, but we don't. Yeah. Put God's God, God likes doing new things all the time. Well, especially now, that's the big. Yep. He's changing everything. So. He sure is. Yeah. Well, I don't want to put you on the spot, Michelle, but you've been back there listening to all of this. <laughs> Any thoughts? Well, you know, I come from a more secular perspective. Mm, I know I that's why not, it's so good. Today. Because I am not as religious as all of you. With you know, you all know the Bible and everything else. But you know, in looking at this, because again. <clears throat> I'm not religious, however, I do believe in some of these things, and what I am doing right now, I really see that this is part of what my whole thing is mm. right now, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> as the um, coordinator for the the, uh, the Asian part of the Republican Party, and my whole thing has been in trying to grow the Asian uh, participation in our whole election process and so my whole thing I think I encourage all of my volunteers that I have I try to, to build I'm building our our group and the base that we have um, and the comforting part is um, because there is so much right now people are so skeptical about the election process. They still think there's a lot of rigging going on. They think that, you know, their vote isn't going to count. And my whole thing is, you know, I am trying to encourage and comfort these people and telling them that, you know what, we do make a difference. We can make a difference. We will make a difference. And, you know, with the sheets, dead sheets, and, you know, they're all talking about, you know, these changes and whatnot. Well, I certainly hope that the change that they're seeing, that they're prophesying, I certainly hope it is going to come to pass November 8th. Because if it doesn't happen, then we are in for, it, it, it is going to be catastrophic, I think, for us. And when he said the changes, what we have to look for is January 2023, I'm assuming that's because that's when the, the new, uh, the, uh, you know, our, the house and the central, place, yeah. yes, will be put into place. So I certainly hope that that is going to come to pass. So, you know. What you all are saying, I certainly believe in it from, you know, from the religious standpoint and the um, whatnot. I, I certainly hope that is what comes to pass. And, um, but from my point of view, I mean, I am doing everything that I can to, to help in this whole process. And um, so, you know, I think together, you know, the, the secular part, of, part and the religious part, I think we can make it a lot stronger together that way. So that's, that's my well, thank you, Michelle. I yeah. want to add on to what you were saying. How I interpreted that is it's the practical application, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just what you were describing with your son. Like, it's the practical application of this happening, and you're doing it because that's how God's moving you to do it. Like, that's my interpretation of what I just heard. One other thing that I would add on, you know, with the encouragement in the building, there was a word that was coming to my mind when you were talking about the comforting side of it, and I was like, empathy, empathy, mm -hmm. empathy. And coming alongside and just meeting people where they're at mm -hmm. with those concerns, with those reservations, and acknowledging them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're already doing this, but that's like my head is sunny here, so I'm just gonna put it out there. You can do with it what you will, but really acknowledging their concerns, mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter, and, and giving that a voice to and then showing them how and why it actually does matter that there's mechanisms in place there's checks and balances mm -hmm. yes there's rumors that there can be corruption right like it's it means so there may or may not be some truth to that but if you don't get in the game if you don't then you're sure to not have a voice exactly. you know that that type of thing so i 
as you were describing that, like you're doing it. You're the practical application of everything that's mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. whether your your beliefs are there or not there. It doesn't. It, it's there mm -hmm. and it's happening right now. And so that whole comforting and the empathy, like I heard you hit the points of encouraging and building and there was something around the empathy in there that was very strong for me. So I wanted to share. Well, thank you. I, I want to add a comment too. First of all, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I think it's it's awesome that you come here and you open in on us and say, hey, you know, I don't have the same as much mm -hmm. religious beliefs as that. And I'll make a few comments first. I want to thank you because I think the mission you do is important. And I think getting this change in office and everything else is so important. It will make our mission, the bigger mm -hmm. mission of God easier. There's no mm -hmm. doubt, unfortunately, because this country sadly believes that our, our people in office mm -hmm. run the country. That's the big shift we need to get right off the get-go. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. They don't run the country. We, let, we are led to believe that they, they run the country. That's my belief. So my, my comment to all of those who are behind is, Obviously, I want ease or power. Absolutely. It doesn't matter to me who wins or doesn't as far as my belief in where we're going. We will get there. I don't care who's in office. I love this piece right here. If you go back and you say, okay, this country, what's the highest order of this country for the most part? The Supreme Court, right? Mm -hmm. CDC shuts down our country, goes to the Supreme Court. They say, you, can't, you don't have the authority to shut down our country. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? They do it anyway. It's done anyway. So let's not be in belief that the, what we've created as the leadership of this country, the people need to take back the country. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Sure. We take it back, and it will be. Um, when, when the COVID was shut down, there was, a, there, was a, there was a restaurant in the area of St. Charles who was shut, told to shut down, and he sued the state of Illinois and said, mm -hmm. I'm not shutting down. And his theory was, I'm going to leave everything I have built anyway. I built this restaurant. It's my whole life, it's my whole family. I'm going to run it anyway. He won. He won. He had the guts to stand up and say, you, you are not my authority. What we need is us as Christians and believers and followers of Christ to say that that is not our authority. Amen. So we get enough people understanding who the, who the authority is. There is no power. I was watching one other thing, one last thing I'm sure about. I was with my dad. He watches this One News America all the time, which is amazing, by the way. He mm -hmm. sits with it back and forth just go over and over. And I was watching how Russia has taken over parts of the Ukraine, and he's put out this public vote for the people to vote if they want this part of Ukraine to be part of Russia. And if they all vote yes, then any attack on Russia in this part, in this region of the Ukraine will be considered an act of war on Russia and they can therefore retaliate. So the idea being, those who want to claim the state will claim the state. And are the people behind that or not? Is it what really matters? It's like, it's, it's crazy how, and that's how territories, that's how states get formed. So, we have to really think of this as no longer it's Russia, it's this or that. It's God's, it's God's country. And are we going to take back? That's my point of my Russia story. They stepped in to Ukraine and said, this is now ours. What do you guys want to do? Should this be ours or should this not? So we need to step in and say, this is God's kingdom. I don't care what anyone else says. What do we think? So our job is to get those around us, believers in this, and take back our country. Yeah. That's that's my belief. So I know so for what it's worth. So but please I, I, I value and I and all that makes it easier without question because those things don't come with hard battles. Right. But I'm not I'm not convinced that that derive that that dictates our outcome. Hmm. That is just how difficult the journey is going to be. How rough will the waters and tides be? That's what it means. Shoot my goes. She well, not goats. Self leadership kept playing in my mind as you were talking. Mm -hmm. um, like this, it ties into that self leadership and just not letting anyone or anything else dictate for you that you get to make those decisions. Take turn. Hey, Julia. You guys have so much wisdom, but. Well, I know you're very quiet. So. Well, what holy spirit? Let's put the spot. marine in. No, what the Holy Spirit was telling me was actually confirmation from what everyone was saying. Because Holy Spirit told me to put um, to put on your plate carrier. Mm. You know, so He said it's time to take back ground. And 
I allowed you to lose. Mm -hmm. And it's and he put the prayer of Jabez in the heart, you know, Lord bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. So he said you're gonna be taking that ground. Pray God. And you're gonna be doing the grunt work and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. But it's you know, upper battle. I mean not physical battle but spiritual battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. I think I think with spiritual comes mental. Like you say physical and you could think physical battle or mm -hmm. mental, right? The mental part of that, the mentally keeping focused when it's you feel like you're defeated. And that's part of the spiritual being spiritual, but it's it can be draining. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there's too many there's not enough people to sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'll let you get away with that for today. <laughs> All right, well, what I'd like to do then is just to close everything off, let's pray for our country, okay? And let's pray because we are the Ecclesia, we are the remnant, and even though we're small in numbers, we're mighty in work, okay, in the spiritual level. So um, I guess let's let the Holy Spirit lead. Um, but David, would you start us off? And then we're going to do popcorn prayer. So as God gives you voice, go ahead and voice it. And after a while, if the popcorn stops popping, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll end it. So, okay, let's pray. Father, you are a sovereign God, Lord God. You're Alpha and you're Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You are omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing God. Father, we surrender everything to you, our our dreams, our wills, our uh, our ambitions, Father God. You are, your will be done in our life, not our own. Mm -hmm. And we ask for strength, for courage, for guidance. Continue to go before us. Continue to lead us. Surround us with your with your presence. And we know, Lord God, that it's going to be a hard journey, Father. As you, you said in your word that we have to pick up our cross daily. We have to die to ourselves. Father, use us and give us the strength, give us the eyes to see, ears to hear, give us your heart, your desires, and what you want your Ecclesia to do. Continue to lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I just want to thank you for not only bringing this group of believers together, but bringing together the continued confirmation of what your mission is and what your vision is for the change that's coming here in America and to our nation, to our world. And I, I truly believe, Lord, that as we as we fight these battles, knowing that there are fellow fellow soldiers willing to stand beside us and helping us see continuously in the stories and the, the visions and the prophecies and to inspire us to, to maintain on our track, Lord, because it, it, it is a, a hard journey. It's become a, a spiritual warfare, a mental warfare, and you know, we, we pray, Lord, not a physical warfare, but we see that happen, and, and it's and through the warfare, Lord, as, as people get their, their, their personal emotions tied into their beliefs, Lord, and through all of this, Lord, please just continue to give us the strength to keep keep sight on, on what your word says and what you want our mission to be and not let the enemy distract us from our true mission, Lord. And may we continue as a group to multiply and through our efforts start as maybe a small seed as it may feel here. But I don't believe it's a small seed. I, I actually believe this is this is a, one of many seeds that are just not connected yet, Lord. And may through the efforts that we do, we bring together, infuse these these belief systems, the, the, the soldiers that are out there that are that are all feeling the Holy Spirit in their lives to guide them through this change. Lord, may we be connected. May as as uh, as as our, these 
grow together like vines. They become, they, they strangle the enemy and they cannot pass through, Lord. And so I, I ask for your continued strength and visions to this group and to those that are out there that we plan to, and you know you have a plan for these to come together in this bigger mission, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, for the ways that you work in and through each of us individually. Some of them, some ways you work through or in us, um, it's so overt that we get it, we see it, we see it in each other, and then there's the other ways that's more covert, and we just feel it. We don't always see it, we don't always know where it's coming from, but we trust it, and we lean into it, and we come out the other side in a, in a better place. Um, or helping those around us to get to a better place um, using the, the cornerstones that Powell um, shared with us today of encouraging, building, and comforting. And um, I just want to thank you for that and thank you for the message and thank you for the ways um, you bring us together, whether we always know why we're here or not or what's going to come from it or not, um, that it's a a welcoming and open place for all, um, regardless of where they're at in their journey with you. Yeah. And um, and we just wanted to thank you for that. Father, we pray for this country. We pray, Lord, that you would use us, your ecclesia, in whatever way you see fit. Uh, Father, I pray that you would instill in each one of us the understanding of our authority in this place, that we are your sons and daughters, that we are princes and princesses, and we have the authority to speak, Lord, to the evil that's around us and to vanquish it, Lord, to send it back to the pit of hell. All we need to do is to understand that that authority comes from you, Lord Jesus, and from your blood that was shed on the cross. That's why this blood is so powerful. It's because of this blood that we have this authority. Help us to understand that, Lord. Help us to grasp that and to understand in a heart way and that we can actually live it out. Thank you, Lord. And we do pray, Father, for this country. We pray, Father, that you would continue to expose uh, all the evil and the corruption. Uh, uh, Father, I, I pray uh, about what's going on with the FBI and how it's being truly weaponized to attack, Lord, your people. Mm -hmm. uh, you're using uh, all these sorts of agencies, uh, even the IRS, Lord, to um, just cause havoc. And Lord, we just speak against that right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, mm -hmm. Father, that you would call out more whistleblowers because there are good people in these places that have true mm -hmm. hearts they're really there to serve their country. And that, Lord, they are just appalled by the leadership of these uh, agencies that are causing them to do things that are against their own conscience. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray for the military, who's literally purging mm -hmm. all the patriots out. Mm -hmm. 
Stop that now in the name of Jesus. It cannot be so. We ask, Father, that you either turn the hearts of these people who do not know you or fear you, that they would come to fear you because the, the fear of God is the bedrock of all understanding and of all wisdom. So if they do not, then, Father, I pray that you get rid of them, that you purge them. Thank you, Jesus. Replace them, Lord, with those that do have that fear of God in them. Thank you, Lord. Because that's the way that our country was designed. It could not operate if the people who were in control did not have a fear of God. And yet, that's where we find ourselves right now. So, Lord, I, I lift up um, these elections that are coming up in November. And it's true, you are the God of the universe. Uh, and I agree with Keith that it really doesn't matter what happens because you are still God. Mm -hmm. Nothing is like making you wonder, oh, well, maybe I messed up. <laughs> you are perfect. You are the God of the universe. You know everything already. You already know the end. So, Father, we just, that's, that's what can give us peace. That's what gives us victory, to know that you are in charge no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. But with that said, Lord, we yes. do pray for your patriots, your believers, those that have the fear of God, to be victorious Lord, in these elections. That any kind of uh, shenanigans, Lord, that uh, opponents are trying to pull by rigging the elections, or doing something, Father, to uh, sway the outcome in their favor, that you would just cancel that now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you told us, Lord, to pray for all people, mm. to pray for kings and all who are in authority, in authority, so that we may live a godly and peaceful life, mm. godly and quiet life. Mm. So here... We're praying for these people. And we are the kings. Because we cast the vote. Yes. We are the kings. Yes. We're praying for all the kings mm. and those who are in authority, Lord. Yes. And we're praying for all people because, Lord, that's what you desire is for all to be saved. Yes. And none perish. Yes. Thank you. Continue to be with us now, Lord. Continue to guide us. Help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. That, Lord, when we're just doing our daily lives, that you would uh, just say, hey, talk to this person. Or, hey, do this for that person. That, Lord, we would be obedient. And that, Lord, we would see the miracle that you do using us. And thank you, Lord, that we get to be a part of this. And we are part, Father, of your kingdom. And we are doing our role. We are doing our job. But we leave the results to you. Thank you, Lord. So continue to be with us now. We, we, uh, we thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Father. Anything that holy, the Holy Spirit is not in it is not worth doing, Lord. Continue to guide us to keep our eyes on you. Follow the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Not to conform to the ways of these, this world. Lord, when people are saying things, we, we have the spiritual authority to say, I speak against that. I don't approve of it. Mm. Because no weapon formed against God or against us shall be. Yes. And we, we proclaim that, Lord. We're not going to agree with the enemy. Mm. And we're not going to fear because fear, if we fear, God told us to not fear. When, when we fear, we open the door 
for the devil to come in and use us to do it. Yes. Because the devil doesn't have authority. Yes. It's all day long trying to persuade us to be afraid mm -hmm. and, and, to, and to be to be angry, to, to be frustrated and all of that. Mm -hmm. But Lord, I just wish to pray that you give us that joy, yes. that hope, and that peace mm -hmm. to know that your promise is true. Yes. And we, you're the first witness to give us those promises. And we are the second witness that agree with you. Father, I do also want to thank you for uh, what you're doing uh, with Keith and Beyond Living. Uh, I pray, Father, that um, you would continue to show him favor because, Lord, he is trying to make a difference. Uh, I pray, Father, for the uh, sponsorship uh, Formula One to come through. Yes, Lord. Uh, but your will be done. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord agree with all your promises because you said two or three shall, shall be done if two if two agree on earth shall be shall be done before us thank you so much and uh lord we pray that your will be done because you truly you know what's best uh, and we ask you to you have you have plans for us plans to We just pray every single one in this room that your plan on them on every single person in this room your plan will be done mm -hmm. that we all live out we all live out our destiny and our purpose Thank you. and we all fulfill fulfill your plan in us yes Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome. Woo! That was good. See, that's war. That's warning.